Hello and welcome to the show. Now, one of my favourite pastimes when it comes to Forza Horizon 4 is the Lucky Dip Racing. The way this works is each player in the lobby is randomly drawn a car using the Kudos Prime website. That car then is auto-upgraded to the top of a specific class. This to kind of balance out. We used to have reverse grids and roll-off delays. We can't do that on Horizon, so we auto-upgrade the cars to the top of a specified class to try and make things as balanced and as entertaining as possible. For this particular video, we were drawing B-class cars like this Subaru Impreza, for example, auto-upgraded to A-class and S1 class cars auto upgraded to S1. And we were hoping for some interesting battles. I have been quite lucky for this event. As you can see by the vehicles flanking me on either side here, uh, I have an Audi S1. There is. Oh, the cholera is starting on pole. Yeah, there's a buggy in this particular group. There's also the Ford Bronco. There are some more serious competition in here. Honda S2000, there's a Subaru and Pretzer. DS3 down at the back is going to have some trouble. Uh, what, watch the Carlton. You see, we were playing around a little bit before we started this, and the Carlton, I say watch the Carlton, you won't see it for very long. It has the worst launch I have ever seen from a car ever. It's starting third. It won't be third for long as we get off the line. Uh, and it's a 700 horsepower car that cannot launch. It just cannot get going. The uh, buggy actually surprisingly beat me down towards the first corner. I'm not so keen to run the Audi in that hot on lap one because I know how easy it is to miss checkpoints. Oh, there's quite a lot of understeer. Now, I did uh, have a look through the uh, kind of build of the vehicle, see what the game put on the car. Uh, we're on the standard tyres, although they are the equivalent to sport tyres. On the S1, we have just under 400 horsepower. We have race suspension. We have full race weight reduction, which means the car's only 2,400 pounds. Which is pretty damn nice going, actually. For this, yeah, I might perhaps prefer race tyres to the sports. You get a lot of understeer with the sport tyres, as I'm about to find out there. Um, there are a few cars, I think, on race tyres in this field. Um, but I had a much higher starting B-class car for this. These were B-class cars also upgraded to A-class. Uh, so, yeah, I, I didn't have as much PI to work with with the S1 as some. That S2000 looks bloody quick in the corners. I don't know whether it is going to be able to match in terms of a straight line speed. That is, the understeer from the Audi there is immense. So, we have got Bronco, weirdly, leading the way. We laughed when the Bronco was drawn, but it is actually going to lead lap one. I have got much better top speed than the Bronco. The Audi's a little rocket down towards this first corner. The Bronco's brakes are terrible as well, uh, but it's apparently not all that... Not all... The Bronco's got acceleration that the likes of... Well, my Audi doesn't have, but it doesn't handle. I'm really worried about the S2000. Uh, I've overshot that corner. We've now got to try and outdrag both of these before the next corner. We're going to mug the Honda. <laughs> Honda's got no go down here. In fact, we're now actually all starting to form up in a line. The DS3, I think, is coming to join in the fun, and that will be uh, that could be fast. It is, I think, the only front-wheel drive car in this group. But uh, I might have... Uh, I apologise if I... <laughs> the Bronco a little wide in all that. I don't know whether I nudged it or whether it was understeering off. It's really easy to understeer off there into the rocks. And, well, you click the rocks, you slow down quite a lot. Yeah, the DS3 is flying around here. I've just not got the grip to compete with it. Now, there is a chance that I might be able to defend from it. It will depend on my straight line speed. If I can out out drag it, the GTO is actually starting to climb back up or climb up through the grid. GTO is a car I love, do not get me wrong. I love them, I'd love to own one in real life at some point. However, Forza trying to build it. The DS3 is so much better through these corners. That was not an intentional brake check. That's genuinely where I have to brake for that corner to make it. And the DS3 is doing Morse code on the rear bumper. The Citroen is through. Let's not forget the only front-wheel drive car in the field. Oh, the Subaru missed a checkpoint. Um, yeah, the, the GTO before I got distracted entirely. Uh, a car I love, but in Forza can never really build it to a class to work. However, auto-upgraded cars, it seems that uh, the GTO pretty damn solid. I'm not going to be able to run as... can't run. I've run closer to the Citroen's pace than I expected, but... Uh, yeah, I can't really keep up with it. My only party piece is the acceleration and traction should we, uh, you know, have rain and, and so on, but low speed, low end traction, I could beat the DS and of course launch, but that thing is gone. That thing is absolutely buggering off into the distance and I can't stop it. The, by the looks of it, 
the S2000 is fighting with all sorts of cars back there. The GTO was in that lot. It's fallen back now. I don't even know. Oh, this is a Sierra. Blakey's driving a uh, Sierra Cosworth in this, which is a fairly good shout of a car. Gliska is got to be playing it a little risky with the checkpoints. He's just about making them. However, yeah, you, I, I personally, I probably, I say I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't want to be playing it that risky. Doesn't mean I wouldn't be. Depends on uh, how how mad I am feeling. This S one's not bad. This S one's not bad at all. It just, if it had race tires, I might stand a chance. If it had gone for race tires and minus something else, but Forza decreed it shall be. Uh, sport well, standard tyres, which is the equivalent of sports. The DS3 is getting some oversteer, perhaps? I don't know, just some smoke billowing from the car. Um, yeah, there's again a bit of, bit of wheel spin or oversteer or something from the DS3. Yeah, the S1's certainly a fast car here. I think it's got the measure of the S2000. The Honda can give it a little bit of grief. However, the Honda's too slow down the straights. As we head on towards the final lap, there's a very slidey Sierra in the background. <laughs> Front wheel drive, the way to go, it would seem, weirdly. I have had I have had front wheel drive A-class cars do nicely out of Veloster uh, that were pretty decent in A-class. Although normally, if I was building a car, A-class is starting to push your luck getting front wheel drive to work competitively. Although apparently with auto upgrades, uh, they can work quite nicely indeed. Uh, we've got <laughs> they're still changing further back. In fact, now the Sierra's fallen all the way back to sixth. Uh, we've got the GTO up to fourth, and I think, I think Nitels is in a 300ZX as well. So there's a big fight going on further back. We're kind of in a little bit of no man's land up here in second. I nearly murdered myself on the rocks. Yeah, the DS3 is gone. Can't touch that. Can't slow it down. It's, it's so quick I can't even really defend from it. Not around this sort of track. Uh, the S2000 is... Me and the S2000, I think, are pretty similar in terms of pace. Uh, as I said, I think it'd be difficult for the Honda to find a way to overtake me, though, because I'll always just repass it whenever we get to a straight. Well, barring any silly mistakes in the final corner, that DS3 is going to take a victory. My S1, though, solid car, fought valiantly, but second was all it could manage, certainly at that, uh, that particular track. The S2000 will take third ahead of the GTO, the Sierra in fourth. Fifth ahead of the Fair Lady Z. The Bronco ends up in seventh, but a good showing from that car. The terrible starting Carlton uh, in eighth ahead of the Subaru that we know, Mr. Checkpoint. Uh, then we have the Cholera uh, down in tenth. Yes, I know that's not his actual name, but it's a terrible vehicle to drive, so that's what I'm going to call it. Ahead of the Tuareg. Uh, that, well, decent enough lap time, actually, from the Tuareg, but uh, yeah, a fair way down. Look at the lap time from the DS3. That's scary quick. That is scary quick indeed. So, we're on to the second race with these vehicles. I am not sure about my Audi. I've had very good grid spots, at least. I guess that is something. We start from pole. We start alongside the Bronco at the Prince's Street Garden Circuit. The DS3, the S2000s are going to be the ones to watch here. At anybody else on race, anyone on race tyres, full stop, is going to be... Uh, fast around this track. Yes, there are some acceleration zones. Sure, the Audi will be okay around them, but my understeer is quite chronic. My best bet, I say if I'm going to win, I don't think I can hold off some of the fast race tyre cars uh, for six laps around here. My only chance of winning is escape away at the front a little bit early on, but with the Bronco, I don't think I can. The Bronco does actually get turned pretty well. Uh, while it might not have race tyres, I presume it has rally tyres, which are actually better than the sport tyres that I would be on here. And they're probably quite wide tyres. I think I'm two, four, fives all around with this. Oh, we're going to pop out a ghost mode at some point. There we go. Uh, <laughs> it's the... I'm quite evenly matched with the Bronco, strangely. Uh, we are... We had a very... We get quick launches. We are likely to perhaps run away a little bit from the pack here. Uh, where we get the GTO. I'm going to try and make it... Stop for that corner. Bronco's got. I knew the Bronco would cut back underneath. I just had to hope that it couldn't carry the speed it needed to, and it could. Uh, so there we go. The Bronco, Bronco's tripoding through that penultimate corner around the final turn. Yep, there it goes again. <laughs> Look at it wiggle. That is one excited Bronco right there. That is one excited Bronco indeed. The Tuaregs held on to fifth at the moment so far, which is surprisingly good for that vehicle. Uh, I'm sure we'll see other cars 
working their way up. For, like, we'll just enjoy our battle. If it doesn't stay the battle for Thirst, which it might not, we're still having fun. Oh, Broncos run wide. Oh, there's going to be a gap there, but it's going to vanish pretty quick if I'm not careful. Uh, so, we've got, I mean, behind us, we've actually got quite a nice selection of cars behind us at the moment. We've got the GTO, the 300ZX, and the Touareg blocking in the likes of the S2000 that I know I'm worried about. The likes of the S2000, the likes of that DS3. I'm trying to get underneath. I just can't get on the power. We understeer so much compared to the uh, vehicles I guess I'm used to driving. The Bronco's got some oversteer. That is an opportunity that I will not turn down. Now, we will be a little wide out of the final corner. The Bronco's going to try and get underneath us. Uh, still, uh, still the Tuareg holds on to a fifth place. I'm very surprised in all of that. Expecting the Bronco to have a go at the inside, which it does. Oh, I get street furnitured on the outside. That's not ideal. Oh, I'll push you past a checkpoint. <laughs> Bloody street furniture. So the Bronco has its strengths. I have my strengths. The Bronco's out very wide again through all of that. We really don't want to. I mean, if we can hold it at a half distance and still the same order is going on behind. It's possible, actually, the DS3 doesn't like this circuit so much because front-wheel drive can't get out of the corners very well. Some of these lower-speed corners, the front-wheel drive DS3 might be having trouble. It also probably doesn't like the street furniture all that much. I can kind of use the Bronco as a street sweeper uh, through a lot of this. We're going to do exactly the same thing as we did last lap. Almost, not quite. Could, couldn't duck the nose underneath. The Bronco sliding. Bronco's doing its little tripoding act again. <laughs> Track race. This is a really weird race. Who would have thought an Audi S1 would have been fighting a Ford Bronco and just a, a, not a normal Bronco, a big lifted Bronco that actually turns surprisingly well. Uh, through all of this. It's, this is madness. Brilliant racing. And this is the fun of Lucky Dip. You get. I've never driven an S1 before. I've never driven an S1. This is a badly built S1 racing against a probably badly built Bronco, but it's brilliant fun. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Still can't find a way bloody pass. But there we go. Uh, Ninetales is up to third with the 300ZX. I mean, they're having a massive battle as well for the uh, third place, for the remaining podium spots. Come on, get underneath that Bronco. This is a good opportunity. I uh, can't do that, though, because you'll end up on such a tight line here, or you'll end up in the barriers. The Bronco's clearing street furniture and actually slowing me down now. Come on, I think I've got a little bit more pace. The Bronco's tripoding once more into the street furniture it goes. We are to the inside now to turn one. We've got a big... I'm amazed we've got as big a lead as we do fighting like this. I think I've overdriven turn one a bit. Yes, I have. It's a good cutback from the Ford. I knew when I was on the brakes, I knew I'd make the corner, but I didn't know. I knew we were going to be slow on the exit. And uh, nope, we couldn't fight off the Bronco there. I want to go underneath you. Can I get that underneath manoeuvre done? We're going to go for the cutback this time around as we drag race out of the hair. But the Bronco's initial acceleration is good. My, my top end is better, but the Bronco's initial drive is very, very good. We've already got one more lap. It's been an incredible battle. Can I find a way to finish it off nicely? That Bronco struggling. It knows it's got a cover. That's a good defensive job there. Knows it's got a cover, and we're going to start having trouble from the 300ZX if we are not careful. I get good speed through that penultimate corner. Oh, Bronco slipping and sliding there. That was too much oversteer for the Ford. I will jump at that opportunity. Thank you very much. Too much oversteer. A little bit of a tripod in an uh, inopportune position and we will get into turn one in the lead i think the bronco might struggle to i say recover from that uh, we were able to get far enough away and now we can hopefully turn the screws on the remainder of this race the ds3 let's just ds3 is only up into eighth place i really thought i say i really thought that might run away but i guess maybe the stop start nature of this circuit killed its uh, killed its chances I'm surprised. I'm glad to see the 300X doing well. We've not really had much time to look at the other battles going on as we've kind of been embroiled in a battle for the lead for the entire time. But yeah, the 300ZX has come out best of the rest in a third place ahead of the GTO, then the S2000. And we'll have a look at around this final corner because things could still change before the end of the race. Yeah, the Bronco, it tripods its way out of the last turn, but it won't be enough to match the Audi that takes victory. 
on the streets of Edinburgh. And we do get fastest lap. 300ZX not far away. Neither was the S2000. The Touareg was mighty quick around here. Well done for getting that up to sick the head of the DS3. Oh, the DS3 does get fastest lap, but got stuck in traffic. So the DS3 just couldn't overtake the traffic well enough. The uh, Sierra is down there in 8th ahead of the Subaru. The Mustang will take 10th ahead of the Cholera. Uh, that does, though, beat the Carlton. I love the Carlton. But dear me, that one was absolutely shocking. Well, here we go. The Audi S1, a damn good overall car. Really the DS3, the fastest one there. However, the Audi's launch it could fight its way through traffic quite nicely. I think the game was very kind with the <laughs> lucky dip draw there. So, for our next races, we are driving S1 vehicles. We were drawn S1 class cars that were then auto-upgraded to the top of S1. I have been, again, relatively lucky. A Ferrari 599 GTO. There are some drift cars in this group. There's a twin mill. There's a Porsche 917 as well, as long as a few Aston Martins that are vaguely sensible, a Reventon that's quite sensible, and a Donkavort that, in a brief drag race we did, didn't go straight for the entire time. So, we can have an interesting mess. Two all-wheel drive cars in this, the BMW M5 and the uh, Reventon. My Ferrari is actually, I think, the second least powerful car at 697 horsepower. The Donkavort has less, but the Ferrari will outhandle it. And that's what I've got to hope. The uh, Chevy, <laughs> the Chevy's round, the Chevy's, the poor Chevy truck is going to have a horrible time. Um, yeah, if you've been drawn one of the drift cars, uh, you're likely to have a tough time. Not impossible. Oh, I've got a wheel on the grass. Once you get a wheel on the grass, you are done for through there. Um, yeah, the drift cars unlikely to be all that much fun. The 917, theoretically very fast. It's got incredible power. It's very light. However, uh, that's not on race tyres. That's on sport tyres. Whereas most of us, the Aston Martins, I believe, are all on race tyres. The Reventon, I'm pretty sure, is on race tyres. My Ferrari is. Uh, so, you know, I want the race tyres. The Porsche's setup as well is funky. Uh, now, if there are any straights, of course, the drift cars are going to have way more power than the rest of us. We're talking thousands and thousands of horsepower going on in some of them. I might be able to get the revent on here as it understeers out of that corner. Uh, I will take the position. The revent has got the traction that I do not have. It's Aston Martins 1 and 2, and I want to come and try and spoil the party with the Ferrari. The yeah, well, revent has got the <laughs> straight line speed to have me beat. It just can't match the Ferrari's grip. I have a horrible feeling we're going to fight over second place and let Gliska run away. The Reventon leaves me space on the other. Yeah, so the Lamborghini cannot match my Ferrari's quartering, but I can't match the Lamborghini's straight line speed. And um, me trying to hold it around the outside was a little bit brave. Behind there's the third of the Aston Martin. This time not in the kind of turquoisey green colour and the BMW M5. I have so little. Admittedly, I was wonky out of the previous corner, but I still have very little straight line speed. Uh, Nightels is trying to desperately keep up with one of the Drift Mustangs and is just about on the back of that group. I feel like I've got a very quick car. I've got the typical like handling car build almost here in relation to the field anyway. I'm very quick through the corners, but the problem is I can never quite get close enough to overtake, which means I get slowed down through the corners, and then the faster cars than me vanish when we get to a straight. Their lap time's not really affected, and I just get slowed up. Uh, so, <laughs> we're going to have that frustrating race. But it's nice to have a car, you know, compared to some of the drift cars, some of the monsters that are in this race. It's nice to have a vehicle that I vaguely trust, at least, but it is going to mean I'll really struggle. If I started on pole, I'd probably be able to run away, but... Yeah, we're <laughs> having a tough time. The M5 just slid off towards the wall. The Aston Martin is now through, so I don't have to worry about that. As I try desperately to cling on to a fourth place. If they're catching the leader, if they all start fighting one another, uh, this could make for an interesting time. Lamborghini's wide, very, very wide for all of that, but there's just no real space for me to find a way. Oh, it's that infuriating part of the race. I like, I like my 599 here. I think it's a pretty damn nice car. Um... But, and the lap time is going to be good, but just trying to deal with other cars is tricky. I mean, <laughs> remember, we have got, well, I say four different cars, three vastly different cars. The Aston's a little bit, it's still quite different Aston Martins. Um, all auto upgraded. These are all cars built by Forza to the top of S1 class. And, well, as you can see, 
pretty bloody close. I'm going to overdrive that part. Ah, me trying to go around the outside here is not... I say me trying... Me just trying to make speed. There's just too many cars almost ahead of me. I'm trying to find different lines to make something work. We've now let Gliska get away. And, well, Gliska's going to win this one. Uh, unless they make a mistake on this final lap because we've all fought each other too much. Ah, it's annoying. I feel like I've got a quick car with this. I feel like I've got a fast 599, but I'm just not able to clear traffic. Uh, well enough. It is the way it goes sometimes. Can we have a look? On the exit, I've got to be wary of the Aston behind us. Lamborghini's now up to second. Oh, come on, 599. We've got a good run down towards the first corner. Oh, the Vantage is good under brakes. It's such a little bit of a gap to try and fire through there if I was going to. Got a good exit. The Vantage sliding a little bit. I've got no such issues with the 599. It's barely slid around at all unless I put a wheel on the grass. Uh, which I have done, unfortunately, on a couple of silly occasions. I think we cleared the vantage now. Oh, the Aventador's off to the wall. The Aventador's in big trouble through all of that. This might give me an opportunity for a second place. Well, I've got to put a wheel on the grass. The Aston's behind are fighting. We'll have to have a bit. I know where I can possibly get the Aventador, but it depends on what the Lambo does and how brave I am here, how fast I am here. If we are quick here, can I have... No, the Lamborghini's spot on. Well, as I said, the Lamborghini was a little slow through there. I could dive up the inside of this corner because I've got the grip to do it. But the Aventador was spot on. Uh, there was nothing I could do. I'm pretty sure the Aston just lapped the Silverado. <laughs> I think the Silverado's given up. Uh, <laughs> Silverado had a terrible... Uh, things started badly for the Silverado. They got worse. I Yeah. The Silverado was a tough thing to work with. Uh, the Twin Mill got ninth. The best of the drift cars would take a seventh place. And lap time actually not very far away at all from me uh, the 917 was apparently a nightmare to drive looking at the lap time down there the twin wheel beats the donkavort the nissan 240 uh strove. the nissan 240 a slower lap time than the silverado but the drift cars funnily enough didn't quite work around there a slightly frustrating race for me but 599 good car well, we head to the Bamber Coast Circuit for our final race with our Lucky Dip cars. I'm hoping this will be a place the Ferrari will like. We have had another relatively kind... We've had lots of relatively kind... I think fourth is the lowest I've started. In fact, Silverado is back towards the front. Not so great for the, for the Silverado. It's DB11 that's going to be starting on pole. Uh, this time around for the Aston Martins. We're a few places ahead of the Vanquish. Uh, Revent on we know is going to launch quick. Thankfully, I say thankfully, as much as I hate ghost mode, and I still hate ghost mode at the start of the races, does mean the Silverado won't be a problem. You know, we'll <laughs> pass the Silverado while it's flailing around and trying to get some traction. Uh, the Mustang, I mean, we know the Mustang has potential to be very quick. I don't think this circuit will work so well for the Mustang. It's more likely, if anything, to work for the, for the 599. We'll have to wait and see, though. How it goes. We know this has got some pretty good grip. If I can get past the DB11 before it gets to... No, it's not going to be before it gets out of ghost mode. Unfortunately, oh, that's a iffy time to leave ghost mode. Oh, God, okay, there's a little bit of understeer around there. Do apologise, Leo. We'll actually let off the throttle. I'll let you keep that position for the uh, slight... I say a slight assistance wide. Not intentional assistance, but there we go. The low-speed corners might work for the Reventon. Certainly off the line. The... You know, an initial part of the race will work in favour of that Reventum. I don't know whether it's going to be able to stay out there. We shall see. I get left for dead by everything. It's quite annoying. My lack of straight line speed. Uh, yeah, it's a good car. I think in, in the context of this field, and probably this field only, as good as the 599 is, we can see how much time we make up through here. Um, I cannot make up enough time in the corners. I just am unable to. I have to push the car so hard, and I... Well, I've never driven it before. I had a 599 hanging around in my garage before filming this, but uh, <laughs> I think whatever a wheel spin never touched the car. So I'm trying to push the limit. I've got to, because otherwise I get murdered everywhere. we get got a good run up here, but I'm not going to have anywhere to put the car, really. I could have fired up the inside, but it wouldn't really have worked. Uh, I'm just going to follow the rest of... Well, we'll follow the bank of the bank, which slips and slides its way out. The traction from the 599 is incredible. As I said, it is it's rear-wheel drive. There are two all-wheel drives, the Reventon and that BMW. And my car is the least oversteery of the rear-wheel drives by a very long way. 
There is absolutely no sliding from this car compared to the DB11, although it will be sliding if I hit the, hit the curb. That's, I mean, not really the car's fault as much as the driver and the track. Um, if anything, yeah, the 599 more understeery. Perfect for me. It's how I like my cars to drive. I'm going to lose out. I think I have got more. I've definitely got more speed than the DB11. I think I've got more speed than the Vanquish, but if I cannot clear that DB11 quickly... Uh, we might be in trouble. I've got a perfect run up the hill to try and do this now. Uh, the Vanquish. I might be better under brakes than the Vanquish. I need to do this here, really. There we go. Up the inside. The BMW's going to come and join in, of course. The all-wheel driving. That will stop that one from oversteering. And that's going to get me as well on the run towards the first corner. I think I've lost out to the Vanquish again. Not, not so much in head-to-head. -head. Oh, God, no. Yeah, we lost the Vanquish. We've got just too many cars between me and the Vanquish. So infuriating in the all grip. Although I think we're going to cut back underneath and get two cars in two corners. We will through there. Don't hit the. Yeah, that's just, I say it's all because of the curb, but the, the curb fired us out. They let the vanquish pass in the first place, and from then on it was downhill and stuck in the fighting. Can now that we're clear of the DB11. There goes the uh, <laughs> turquoise car ahead with the big slide. I put wheels across the grass there, and I'm just understeering. If anything, it's yeah, it's a pretty decent car. The 599. I got to give it. You know, it is a pretty decent car around here. It's nothing to match the Reventon, I don't think. Uh, may, may be if we could have got up to speed and not been four seconds down, we might have stood a chance. Uh, we are clear of that M5 now. Yeah, I just don't. I don't think we can really. We can't really keep pace. The Vanquish. If it doesn't slide at all, I think is a little quicker. The problem, or the, the difficulty is, is that uh, sort of consistent lap times perhaps in that are a, li I say a little bit more difficult. We're only talking relative speaking here. Uh, the Reventon might have made a mistake because we are now much closer than we were last time around. Probably a curb-related one, judging by where the mistake was made through that uh, kind of turn one, turn two, three area. Uh, most like, most likely. Uh, curb related one all ran out wide into the uh, grass as I've done on a couple of occasions Try to be a bit braver with the brakes I don't want to overdrive the Ferrari and completely miss a corner but I can get away with quite a lot I, I dove yeah I did, a, I did a bit of a silly thing I dove too tight on the way through the first part trying to make up time and we'll end up losing it on the exit uh, leaderboard nine tails with the Drift Mustang is doing a good job of hanging on in terms of pace I think the difficulty with those cars is they just can't get up to speed early on they just cannot get going well enough. Once they're in clean air, they can set pretty decent times, but battling other cars, I think they're, they're probably hell, let's face it. And unless there's a lot of long straights, likely to struggle yeah, with their or thereabouts. But it's all a little too spread out. Um, yeah, Blakey with the Vantage is down in a seventh, struggling a little bit, fighting with the... Uh, what was it? Oh, with the Porsche, the 917. The Donkervort is down there in ninth. The da death Trap Donkervort. And yeah, this will not be a fun track for a Death Trap car. <laughs> we are setting very similar. Like, I'm watching the splits between me and the, both the cars ahead, and one lap I'm a little better, one lap there a little better. It just ebbs and flows. It's very, very close between us. Our fastest laps, I'm curious to see, because I reckon they're similar. V gained in very different places. Damn near identical. 52.0, 52.1, 52.0, 52.6, So yeah, the three of us there were basically identical in terms of lap time uh, in all the different places. The Vanquish was the Vanquish was quick down the straights. The Reventon has traction, and I had grip and brakes, uh, but nothing for the straights. Aston's fared pretty damn well in this. The Vanquish second and fourth. The Vantage had a bit more of a trouble uh, around here. I think more stuck in traffic than anything. It seemed to had okay pace, but. Yeah, the game was fairly kind to me. The game was fairly kind to me with the lucky dips. Unfortunately, my grippy Ferrari just couldn't couldn't make the most of uh, of any clean air. I just couldn't get clean air to, to drive it quickly. So and there we have it. A fair amount of luck would go my way in terms of car selection. Really, I got probably the second fastest car in the A class round. The DS3 was quicker. <laughs> DS3 was just faster than my Audi. Um, it got unlucky at the street circuit. Uh, the S1 was, yeah, not too bad at all. A little bit understeery, but, yeah, generally the second fastest car. The 599 was right up there as well in one of the fastest cars. I'd made a few little mistakes with it. I could have driven it slightly better. Its lack of straight line speed did make it a little tough 
to... It just got stuck in traffic, which we have seen plenty of times before. Uh, but yeah, Lucky Dip Racing, there are some strange... Who would have thought an S1 versus a Bronco would have been <laughs> the, the one of the most exciting races we've had for a while? Uh, I, I just really, really enjoy these these random weird matchups. It's an awful lot of fun. It is an awful, awful lot of fun. I hope you guys have enjoyed the weird and wonderful racing. That, though, will be it for today. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, a goodbye.